Hey everybody, how you doing? So we're back again tonight and uh, we're back on the Impala tonight. So uh, got a pretty good idea what's going on thanks to a uh, thanks to one of our viewers and uh, we'll take a look at that. No, you're not bringing home another piece of junk. <laughs> Alright, so getting ready to pull a drive shaft and the tranny back out of this thing. So, uh, uh, Carrie Roach, one of the guys who watches the channel and comments frequently, uh, said on the last video that it looked like I had the wrong throwout bearing, that there was two different sizes. I actually didn't know that. I thought all Chevy throwout bearings were the same until I started looking it up. <clears throat> and here's what we got. I'm pretty sure this is the one that I got in there. And that's the one I need. So that would explain why the clutch is the uh, throwout bearing is not long enough to re release the clutch if I got this one in there. So I'm about 99% sure that's the problem. Because when I ordered the, uh, I just ordered a Rock Auto general purpose uh, clutch kit for this thing for. Uh, 61 Impala. I don't even remember if I ordered for a 61 Impala. I just ordered for a 10 inch clutch just off some random Chevy. So I'm thinking I got that short throwout bearing. So anyway, I'm going to pull all this out and uh, take a look at what we got. And I'm hoping that's it. So let's find out. All right. Well, unfortunately, that was not the problem. I had the tall bearing in there. Um, but I ordered this fork this week and this looks completely different angle than the fork that's in there. And the problem is the one that's in there, you can't get it. It's got such a weird angle on it. You can't get it out of the bell housing without taking the bell housing off. So I think I'm going to come back out here tomorrow and, uh, I'm going to pull that bell housing back off and I'm just going to check and make sure I got the clutch in the right way and I didn't put the flywheel side on the wrong side. Um, that's a possibility. And then uh, I'm going to swap this fork out and I'm going to have to make a new rod for it because um, this rod just, the end of the rod just sits in there and the, the other one has got a pin that goes down through it. So we'll have to work that a little bit different. Um, but that's what we're going to do. So, Carrie, thanks anyway, buddy. I thought we had it. <laughs> but either way, it had to come apart and I could take this back. So, all right, we'll pick this back up tomorrow. All right, so I got the bell housing out. <clears throat> here's the clutch fork that was in there, and here's the other one I ordered this is like for 64 and up this was actually out of a 61 six cylinder cast iron bell housing but if I mean really if you look the pivot point is at the same place the fork is at the same place and really the angle is pretty much the same the only difference is this uses a different connector for the clutch rod than this so I don't think that was the problem So, um, I guess we're going to pull this, uh, I'm starting to wonder if I had the clutch plate in backwards, if I had the flywheel side to the, uh, to the wrong side. So let me, uh, or could there be something wrong with a brand new pressure plate? I guess there could be. <clears throat> All right, well, let me get the clutch plate off, get the pressure plate off and we'll, uh, We'll see what it looks like. All right, so this is exactly how it came out, and it says flywheel side. But if you look at this, you see these marks? 
those clutch fingers were hitting these clutch springs. And I don't know if it's supposed to do that. I don't think it's supposed to do that. Because if those fingers are hitting, well, maybe it is. How does, how does that actually work? The fingers hit the, that, and they're supposed to push this away. The pressure plate is supposed to push away from the clutch disc. Hundreds of these as I put in, I've never really kind of investigated exactly how they work. But I just cannot find anything wrong with this thing. I thought when we pushed these splines in here that it's supposed to pull that pressure plate surface away from that clutch disc but does it do it by pushing on those springs I don't know I'm tempted just to go get another clutch kit and it's because I just don't see anything wrong Everything looks like it should work. All right, let me do some more. Uh, let me do some more thinking here, and we'll uh, try to figure this out. All right, so I've been doing a bunch of research online, and I'm just not. I don't know what the problem is. I am wondering if this pressure plate just is bad. I put it in my. Um, press here and I put the bearing on here and I put a plate over that and I pressed it down as much as I as uh, to what it looked like it should be released and from what I'm telling this surface is not this uh, the, the uh, surface the clutch rides on is just not depressing up into the pressure plate I I mean, it's a mechanical piece, and I just don't see what could be wrong of why it's not doing that. But it just doesn't. And maybe I'm guessing. I don't know. But I went ahead and got uh, looked up on O'Reilly's, and they can have me another clutch kit by 2 o'clock today. So I'm just going to start over again. I don't even remember where I bought this. I think I bought it from Rock Auto or something when, uh, like, back when I was ordering parts for the engine so i try to look and i'm, I'm not sure they probably wouldn't take it back anyway it's like a 110 dollar clutch kit you know just got the stock one because i'm not the uh, not using gonna have a bunch of power in the motor or nothing so anyway i'm gonna go with i know this fork is the right fork for the aluminum bell housing so i got a new boot and the fork, I'm gonna put that on there. I'm gonna have to kind of redo the clutch rod. So I got that done until this gets here. And when this gets here, I'm gonna go pick that other clutch up today. We'll throw it back together and we'll try it again and see what's going on. But until then, I've got uh, other parts here I can be putting together. And I think I'm just gonna do some of that for now or work on the window or something, find something to do to keep me busy here. While I'm waiting for that. So let me get a few. I got uh, had a bunch of parts come in. I got the uh, window channel for the uh, for the front windows. <clears throat> so like this is a piece that goes in the uh, in the uh, wing window, and then uh, these are the pieces that go in the back channel. It's a little bit wider for the back of the window. That goes there. Um, this is, I don't remember what this is. What is that? Oh, new door sills. And with new door sills, we've got new carpet. So lots of 
and I got a mirror for it, and I got uh, what else? That's for speaker wire. I got to run under the carpet. Uh, this is uh, <clears throat> I got this from Jags that run. This is for the uh, uh, speed sensor that you can mount on any GM transmission. So this is uh, this is the one you need if you're doing a TBI swap and you need a speed sensor. So screw this on the transmission. Screw the speedometer cable into this, and then this connects to your PCM. So you you kind of gotta have that to have a speed sensor. You're like 120 bucks. So once the transmission's back in there and I know it's working, we'll put that in there. And uh, these are, I think these are going to look pretty cool. The old Chevy police caps. Let's see what one of these looks like. good budget way to make some decent looking wheels so i'm gonna put them on there now because i got too much crap flying in here okay so let's uh let's put some other small things on here and we'll uh i'll pick this up after i go pick the clutch up and we'll um take a look at it and get it bolted up in there and hope for the best all right, be back in a bit. All right, reproduction mirror. I think that looks nice. And door locks. An ignition lock. I had an ignition lock before, but um, it turned without a key, and I didn't have a key, so. And trunk lock, all keyed the same. So now I got one set of keys that's this whole thing, which is pretty cool. All right, let's uh, see what other little stuff we can do here. All right, so maybe we got something here now. So this is this is the old clutch. That's the new clutch. They got part of the same part number. D556, uh, same brand. This is a 3921, and the new one's a 4022. Uh, but they look exactly the same, same size. Now, here's the difference. Here's my, here's my old pressure plate. And you can see those are kind of flat splines. Here's the new pressure plate. It's kind of got raised splines on it. And it uses the, uh, it also uses the, the thicker throw out bearing. So, is that the problem? I have no idea. Um, but I'll tell you what, this one is, is thicker than this one. But I ordered one for a 60H Chevelle with a 307 because I figured 307, 283, same motor. 68 will have the aluminum bell housing. Won't have the cast iron bell housing. So we're going to try this and hopefully it'll work. Um, all right, so let's... Uh, I'm going to throw this in there and I'm going to have to redo my, um, going to have to redo my, um, clutch rod that goes to the fork because I'm going to use the other fork. So that's going to take a while, a little bit to figure out. But, uh, once I get this all back together, then, uh, we'll take a look and, and see what's going on. So what else do we get done here? I got, uh, I got my bracket down there for my AC. I got had this trim painted, so I got it screwed on. I got these uh, window channels in here. Um, so, like I said, just been hammering away at lots of little stuff while I was waiting on that. So, oh, and that's what the wheel looks like. I think I showed you that already. Okay, so let's uh, let's put this together again and uh, see what we got. All right, so she is back on four feet. So we've got some good news. Let's do a little demonstration here. First gear goes into person's clutch. 
clutch in. Go forward. Back. Clutch is adjusted good. Everything's nice and smooth. Oh, I'm so happy. All right. So that was a long journey to uh, to get to where I wanted to be on that. So. Uh, well, let's see what the next uh, order of business is. <sighs> so it looks like the next order of business is uh, power steering. Isn't that awesome? What the? Man. Where did we? All right. Somewhere in there, I got a power steering leak, so I got to, uh, I got to find it. All right, the fun never ends, but uh, we're still moving in the right direction, so I'll see what I can find out. All right, so my guess is that's the problem. <laughs> I guess I didn't have that hose down in that fitting all the way. All right, well, that's an easy fix. I just have to cut a little, I don't know if I have to cut a little longer hose or just take that back out of there and redo that end. That uh, should have stayed on there. And the main fittings are usually pretty, pretty stout, so. I guess I didn't have it pushed all the way down on the nipple, so. All right, that'll be your, uh, our next big adventure. All right, let's get that fixed. And uh, what are we going to do next? I don't know if we're going to put the... Uh, I need to take that seat back out. Vacuum that hole inside. And uh, I need to, I'd like to get the back window in this week. I mean, get the back window in and maybe the carpet in. Um, and I need to order stuff for door panels, kind of figure out how much I'm going to need. And I need to get uh, glass, plexiglass for the sides. So, but uh, just going on the parts that I got here now, I can get the carpet in and I can get the back glass in. So, let me, uh, well, it's Sunday. I'm done for today. I'm going to go inside, watch a little TV, got a Bible study tonight. And we'll come back out here tomorrow after work and we'll do some more on this thing. So. So just before I wrap it up for today, I don't know if I didn't explain very well, this was the problem, the pressure plate. Now, I don't know if it's bad or if it uh, is just the wrong one. I mean, maybe it's one for like a the bigger truck bell housing or something. I don't know, but I'm, I would not put it in another vehicle and go through that again. But I am going to save this clutch plate because it... Uh, it's brand new and it's identical to the one that's in there. So in case I ever need another one, I'll hang on to that. And then this other throw out bearing, I'm gonna take this one back cause I bought it thinking I needed another one. And I've got, uh, I've got extras now. I've got a short one, another long one that was in there that I didn't know was in there and the one that came with the kit. So. I'm up uh, a good clutch plate and a good throw out bearing for just in case. Now I'm gonna go inside and uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow. All right, I thought I'd take a minute here to show you my marketplace score for 20 bucks. This is from like a farm they were cleaning out. Um, Shopmaster. But pretty cool little bandsaw. And uh, the guy said it used to run the motor turns. So I figured just this part was worth 20 bucks. You know, the the homemade table was a bonus. So I'm going to try to get this thing going, get a metal blade for it, and I can make little metal parts for it. But uh, pretty slick. Probably, I don't know, 1950s maybe, 60s. Um, never heard of it, but it's cool looking. I will do a video on reviving this thing. 
All right, there's my holes. It looks like what happened is when I shove this into that AN fitting when I put it together that I nicked the inside liner like a little piece folded over on itself. So that's probably why the thing came loose and blew itself off of there. So I got some more of this. Let's uh, let's try it again. Make up another piece. Fill it up with fluid again and uh, hopefully not have the same result. All right, so after multiple attempted tries to get this stupid thing to stay together, I give up. So it's a going there. And uh, I found a pre-made line uh, on eBay with the right fittings on it for like 50 bucks and I ordered it and, and uh, I'm done with that thing. I really hate AN fittings. I mean, I just, maybe some people have luck with them. I don't have any luck with them. I can never get the things to not leak or to stay together right. Not that I've done a whole bunch of them, but it seems like every one I've done has just been a failure. So I would much rather have rubber lines and a clamp <laughs> um, or a, a threaded, a regular pre-made threaded fitting. Okay, so anyway, what, uh, so that's it on that for tonight. Um, that part should be here in a few days and we'll deal with it then. So I think what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to start on these window regulators a little bit and there's a couple things going on that I got to fix with them. So these have these little rollers on them. And uh, I ordered a pack of these rollers that were supposed to be for a 61 Impala. And when they showed up, they're like three times the size of these rollers. They're not the right ones. So these are on here. They just, they just won't turn. Um, so what I'm going to try, I think what I'm going to try to do, and these are kind of put on with a, a stepped rivet. So... I'm going to cut the back of the rivet off. We're going to take the roller off of the little shaft, clean it up, get it to roll, stick the rivet back in the hole, and put a spot of weld on it and see if it'll stay. I've done that before. I've tried soaking these things, and they're just... That one's turning out pretty good. This one's turning okay. I've soaked it multiple times in penetrating oil, and it's, it's just it's not getting there. I think there's too much crud in it, but this one won't turn at all. So let me uh, let me get my grinder. We're gonna let me see where that rivet is. We're gonna whack the back of that rivet off, and we'll take that out of there, and we'll take a look at that pin and see what we gotta do. Okay, so I cut the back of the rivet off this thing, pop these out, and then just uh, sanded these down a little bit. Now the roller works pretty good. Now am I being too much of a cheapskate? Maybe, you know, I I could not find these rollers online in this size. So if I can save them um, and use them, I'm going to use them, you know. Um, like I said a bunch of times on these projects, these things will nickel and dime you to death at this stage. You'll make, you know, trip after trip after trip after trip to to the auto parts store and come home with bags of just little stuff that's, you know, $100, $200, $300, it just adds up so quick. So I I try to pinch wherever I can, you know. I mean, just look at, you know, the last two videos. You know, my clutch was wrong. So I was out the original money I bought for the clutch because I bought it so long ago, um, which I probably couldn't send it back anyway because it looked like the pressure plate was the wrong one. But then, oh, then I went thinking it was a throwout bearing. I bought another throwout bearing, which I can take that back. So that's cool. But I had to buy a, another clutch uh, kit. So, you know, like I said, all it and you know, the power steering hose, you know, that's a, that was all done. I probably had 50 bucks in that power steering hose. It was a complete bust. So I had to do another power steering hose. So, yeah, if I can say, if I could save a few bucks on the window rollers, you'd, you'd darn right I'm going to do it. So, okay, anyway, so this one, the rollers completely broke off of. I'm gonna cut this off, 
we'll just push this through there and just put a little spot of weld on the back and uh, then we'll try it and see if it works. I think it's gonna work. If it saves me two dollars, I'll be happy today. I'm tired of bleeding money. Okay. Get, a little, get it on the wire wheel a little bit. Got a little file here. Let's try to bust some of the crud off of it. Looks pretty good. Put a little dot of stuff in there. Come on out. There we go. Turns nice. Now, let's see if we can push it back through the hole. Yeah, I think I put a little edge on it. So I'm gonna file that off. some readers when I'm doing this. I think I can get it in there. Squish this dude in there. in there she turns let's uh put a clamp on it and put a little zap on it total of nothing okay so uh, I'll go ahead and do the other one and uh, I think that's where we'll end this tonight uh, I'll pick this up on the next video I gotta get my uh, my power steering hose needs to come in it should be here Saturday uh, I'll try to get a few other things done this week maybe I'll get the uh, Maybe I'll start on this, the window frame for the other side. I have to extend uh, the other window frame like I did this one. So uh, we'll do that on the next one. Uh, let's catch out, finish this other one up, and we'll catch a word from the Lord, and we'll uh, we'll call it for this one.
Good morning, everybody. Me and uh, me and Roxy here are doing our morning Bible study. So I thought I would uh, just kind of throw this as a message today while I'm getting ready for work. I've been uh, reading in Job for the last uh, last several mornings. So a lot of you are a lot of you are familiar with Job, and uh, you know you pretty much know the story that. Um, um, when Satan came to God and when they were talking about Job and and um, God was saying, you know, telling Satan, you know, look at, uh, there's no fault in my servant Job. And and Satan said, well, if you're going to, uh, you know, allow me to test him and uh, show you that the only reason he worships you is because you're so good to him because Job was a pretty rich guy, you know. <clears throat> rich in terms of that day he had uh he had a lot of family he had a lot of uh, uh a lot of livestock assumably a lot of land um so uh the lord allowed satan to test him and took all those things away you know all of, all of his children died all of his livestock died his home was burnt um uh, he got, got very sick uh had boils all over his body and um and you know he was uh, he, he he stayed true to God, uh, but he did start to question things and uh, start to at one point he's questioning why is this stuff happening to me, and um, and, uh, and and then later he he kind of starts to justify himself and I'm really paraphrasing here, but saying you know I I didn't do anything wrong. Um, you know why is why is uh, God punishing me like this? So, and uh, and his friends come to him and give him some uh, some some good advice and some not so good advice. And uh, when or when it gets to the point where he's he's kind of justifying himself, then then God starts that. It's time for God to answer him, and He does. So let me pick up just a little bit of that. This is chapter thirty-eight. Um, so the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkness counsel by words without knowledge? Now gird up your loins like a man, and I will ask you, and you instruct me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who sets its measurements since you know? Or who stretched the line on it? Or what were its bases sunk? Or who laid the cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. And God goes on and just, and I mean, he's, he's really giving, you know, uh, giving Job the once over here. Um, down a little further. Can you bind the chains of Pleiades or loose the cords of Orion? Can you lead forth a constellation in its own season and guide the bear with her satellites? <clears throat> Do you know the ordinances of heaven? or can fix their rule over the earth? Can you lift your voice to the clouds so that an abundance of water may cover you? Can you set forth lightnings that they may go and say, here we are? So God is just, he's really telling Job, he's like, you know, you, you, don't, you don't question me. And, and we can tend to do that in our own lives. And I, I've done that, uh, done that many times, you know, especially like when we're, we're praying for something, maybe even something we think is is really right. Um, I think a good example was years ago, uh, some friends of mine uh, that I went to church with had a two year old daughter that uh, that that got cancer, and and everyone in that church was praying for that little girl. We held prayer vigils. Um, I know it was constantly going around on the prayer chain. It was constantly talked about. We prayed with them. We prayed for them uh, for healing for this little girl. And uh, and in the end, God said no, and he uh, he took her home. And um, you think, man, why why would God take this? Uh, she barely had a chance at life. Why would she? Why would He take her at this young of age? Um, you know, but but God makes those lives, and He owns those lives. And when it's time to bring those lives home to Him, that's that's one hundred percent His call. Now I look at the same couple now, 
and um, they had two kids at the time. Um, she was two. Uh, the the uh, other one was uh, it was a little boy. He was I think he was, he might have been a newborn. Yeah, I think he was younger. <clears throat> so fast forward about ten years when that little guy is ten years old, and um, they come across. Uh, they decide to be foster parents, and they um, foster this other little boy that's close to their son's age. And it turned out they adopted him, and they've got uh, yeah, they've got two sons now. And and and, and uh, a great little guy. I've met him. You know, the two boys get along great. And um, I, the example they put out, I never saw them blame God. I always saw them being understanding and saying, hey, this was his will that our, our daughter went home to him. And and I really think that, you know, there was a, a long-term plan in place that nobody saw that that even though she went home and they stayed, but they stayed faithful to him, that um, he rewarded them and, and put this uh, other little boy in a good home. So, uh, you know, God's plans, it, sometimes they take a while to to fetter out. But um, if we sit, we look at something like that and we uh, look at the whole thing from front to back, it's uh, it, pretty amazing how how God works those things out. So uh, it's 4 o'clock in the morning, so I hope that wasn't too scrambled. But <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, let's have a quick word of prayer and we'll, uh, we'll end this. Father, we just um, I thank you for uh, for this message today, and I, I thank you for 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 your will for us, even when we don't understand it. And we just uh, I ask for myself for um, you know for for patience when I don't understand, and um, uh, for when I pray for something and and your answer is no, or the answer comes that uh, I wasn't expecting. Uh, that we would be accepting of that and understand that um, um, <clears throat> your your will and your knowledge is, uh, is is vastly vastly superior to our own we could never completely understand you but but we trust you that your way is is right and your way is true um, we thank you Lord amen Okay, so hit like, hit subscribe. Um, thanks for checking out this video. It might have been a little herky jerky. I was kind of doing one thing, then I wasn't, then I was doing something else. But uh, we got a lot done on what I wanted to get done, and we're gonna the next video. I think I'm gonna keep on the Chevy and kind of finish out these little things, and we're gonna we're gonna be getting this thing on the road within the next month. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of it. So uh, okay, have a good day. I'll see you on the next one.